Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about calendars or schedulers in React. So here I have a simple example of a calendar or scheduler that you may want to add to your app. So I can switch between a week view, month view, day view, and I can have events that take place during some certain hours, but also events that take place during the entire day. I can click on this and edit this if I want, so I can change any details here. I can even make it recurring. So maybe it should happen every day or every couple days and I can configure all of that. So those are some basic features that you may want to have as well, but you can make it much more sophisticated because I'm using this scheduler component from Sync Fusion. Right? So they have a really powerful component that you can use if you need some scheduler or calendar to deal with events or appointments that your users may have. So here's another example. Here you can see it can get pretty sophisticated and you can customize this in, in pretty much any way you want. That's a really powerful scheduler and they are today's sponsor as well. They have a very generous uh, community license so you can use them for free if you fit these requirements so less than a million dollars in revenue and these other requirements as well they also have a free trial so we're going to look at how to set it up in react in the latest next.js how to set up the basic functionalities and then we'll look at some of these more advanced use cases so i'm going to remove this from now and i'll show you how to set it up all right so i just removed everything from the page so now we have a blank page and they show you exactly how to get started so i'm using next.js here but it's going to be very similar in feet so i already created this next.js app here we need to install the Sync Fusion React packages. So I'm going to copy this, open up my terminal and just paste this right here. All right, so install that. And then we need to apply the CSS style. So we can just copy this by default. They have the material theme, but they also have a studio here in which you can customize the appearance. So they have, so they have all of these styles out of the box that you can pick. All right, so here in my CSS file, I just added all of these imports for Sync Fusion in the globals.css file in Next.js. All right, so then we can add the React components. So we still, we, so currently we still don't have anything, but if I now go here, and the root component that we want to use here is called schedule component, and we can import it like this. Now, if you do that, you will get an issue here because we need to make this a client component. Right? Now, typically, I don't recommend that you make the entire page a client component because all your imports will then also become client components and you lose the benefits of server components. But for this demo, it's fine. It's actually necessary. All right, so then we want to add the data for the events that we want to display here. So we can say event settings and then we can hook up our data. So I'm just going to have some local data here, but you can also have remote data, right? So you can get the data from an API as well, but I'm just going to have some local data here. Maybe you have a JSON file uh, and it's going to work very similarly here as well. All right, so here I have my data and I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to make that the data source right here. All right, so now we have attached the data here. So very quickly, let's take a look. We just have an array of all the events. So each event has an ID, a subject, a starting time and an ending time. So here you can see it's year and then it's month and then it's the day of the month and then it's the time actually here. So this is 10 o'clock, this is 12.30. And you can also specify whether the event is for the entire day or just for these hours that you specify here. Right, so here it's going to be for the entire day. You can also specify more information here. All right, now we have this, but we still don't see anything because we need to add one more thing, which is the views directive here. So we need to determine which uh, views essentially the user can pick. So we can see the scheduler uh, by day or by week or by month. Um, and you specify the options that the user should have in this component in here. So here we can have one for, let's say, a uh, day here, right? And then we can have two more. So we can also have one for a week and then also for a month. We need to import these, of course. Let's see, I imported them like this. Now, the way that Sync Fusion works is you need to add services if you want to have certain functionality. So here we want to have a day, week, and month view, and we need to inject that as a service. So they have another component here. The last one that we're going to add is the inject component. And here we specify the services for the scheduler here. So here we should have for day, that's what we should import as well. So it's not a string. We, you need to import this as a variable. So then we have week as well. And we are also using the month view. The fact that we have to import these services separately, it just allows Sync Fusion to make the scheduler component very lean because we are only going to import the things that we're actually using. So it doesn't come with everything by default because it would blow up the bundle size too much. Right, so here we're just going to inject the services that we're actually going to use. So if you do this, you should see a calendar here on the page. Now by default, it's going to stretch in both directions. We can quickly fix that here on the root component. We can just set the height and width. So let's set the width to 800 and the height to let's say 500 and let's see. Okay, so then it's sitting here. Now you're going to get this warning about a trial version. So I signed up for Sync Fusion and in the dashboard, you're going to have an API key that you can register here to get rid of this message. 
you can import register license and then you can register that key that you can find in the dashboard right so if you save there and refresh you should get rid of that warning let me make this a little bit smaller and let me center this on the page so we can just use uh, flexbox for that here on the main element we can say flex justify content justify center for the horizontal axis item center for the vertical axis to make vertical centering work it does need to span the main does need to span the entire height of the page itself so we're going to say minimum height should be the viewport so if we do that it's going to be centered all right now by default we don't see our events here why not we have attached our data source right we've attached this but we don't see it here and that's because by default it's actually going to show you the current date of your system so i'm recording this on a saturday on the 13th in 2024 actually so that's why i'm getting this view here so this totally depends on the date of your computer right so if we want to change this we can also set the selected date so here we can say the selected date should be uh, we also construct a new date here and here we just have to specify the year month and day so let's say the 11th so then if i refresh you can see now we are in 2025 and we see two of our events here so very quickly we have imported these three services right so day week and month so we can look at it by day by day right so february 11th i can go back and forth i can also look at the entire month like this i can also look at the entire month like this but by default it's going to show you the week now if you want to change that we can also set the current view so if we only want to show so if we want to show it by month let's say we just have to set it to month so now if you refresh here it's going to show it by month as a default so then you can easily switch between the months all right let's go back to week for a second so you can see that the events here are rendered differently because we have this new budget event and we have the sales presentation here so we have this sales presentation event so if we look at the data source we have sales presentation you can see is all day is false so this is only being displayed for these hours however this one has all, is all day is set to true so then it's going to show that here at the top here connected to that day to make it clear that it is for the entire day now i can click on this and i can actually edit this so here i can have uh i can change the title the location so i can remove the presentation so if i want i can just say uh, report presentation i can change the starting date and ending date of course we can also repeat events so something that may be recurring for example would be a stand-up meeting right so maybe we have some kind of daily stand-up meeting with the team and we want to have that be every day so you can say repeat daily and you can even specify whether it should be every two days right so then you would have a gap between the days and when it should end right but if i do this let's see what we get so now we see stand up meeting and you can see it's every day here if i make it the monthly view you can see stand up meeting every oh, every two days and here it's also on saturday we can block off saturday right so you can you can configure this in pretty much any way you want so let's actually take a look at those more sophisticated demos that syncfusion has prepared for you on their documentation website all right, so here they show an example of airplane fares. So you can render whatever you want in these cells. So here they're displaying a price. I'm hovering this and I get a tooltip here. Now, if I click here, I cannot edit this, right? So you can also disable editing for the user and they can, and you can also highlight a particular one. So this is one for the best price. All right, so here they have another sophisticated one for room scheduling, right? So if you have some kind of building and you have a lot of rooms and people need to make appointments to reserve those rooms this is maybe something you want to use so here they show you that you can customize the well both the columns as well as the the rows here um so here you can see the rooms the type of room that is and how many people can go in there and then people can schedule in to use those rooms at, at particular times right now you can also block off certain parts of the day so here for lunch break it's blocked off and of course you can also block off everything after some time let's say after six o'clock now here they have some other views as well so here this is actually a timeline by day view you can also show it as a week view or actually just look at today so all of that is customizable as well so here let's take a look at the resources then so here to show you as well how to dynamically show or hide the appointments of resources based on resource selection right so you can also play around with this um here they also have work week so only monday to friday even an agenda view right so maybe this is the view that you're after right? and all of this they show you exactly here in the source code how to add this to your particular app so they have many more demos here so i recommend that you go in here and find the demo that's closest to your particular use case and then just customize it a little bit to get exactly what you want Right now, all of these schedulers are responsive by default, so it's going to look good on mobile as well. And you can also localize the dates and currency and other numbers. That's a really powerful component here. You can do a lot of advanced things as well, like synchronize it with, with Outlook and Google Calendar. And I would say check it out. The link is in the description. So check out the other videos in this series in which we talk about the enterprise components that you as a developer have to work with. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.